homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we are going to do a review of uh, the Vivor crossfeed table. I bought this for $89.95. Uh, I think you can get it for $77 something now if you use a coupon. Well, I didn't have a coupon back then. And I think they're regular $95, $96, something like that. Okay, $95.99 or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to review the crossfeed table and we're going to look and see how accurate it is. Uh, and if it moves and that kind of thing. Now, when the table comes, here's the table. When the table comes, it comes just as you see it here. It's all put together. Okay? It's all already assembled, except you have to screw in these little knobs. Okay? <clears throat> now, what I've done is I've got this table run out to its farthest points. Okay, I've got it run back to its farthest points because that's where I'm going to attach it to my to my drill press. In case you're wondering, uh, we are making, converting a Harbor Freight drill press to a milling machine. Not a heavy duty milling machine. And there is a whole series that we're doing on the channel so you can follow that if you want to. Go ahead and subscribe and when you get to the channel, there's a little button you can click, and it will allow you to uh, to follow us and see the completion of converting a mill to a drill, or a drill to a, a drill press to a milling machine. Now, <clears throat> this this uh, crossfeed table, when it came, all of these little set screws were loose. Now, what happens is, see right here, there is a larger groove right here than the, the dovetail of this. Uh, there's also a metal piece in there, a piece of steel, that these push up against. Okay, if they're loosened, if these are loose, then the the table has slack in it. Okay? See that? So what you want to do is make sure that these are all tightened down pretty good and if you don't get them tight enough there's going to be slack in this table and it's not going to do what you want it to do. Okay? Alright, that's got the slack out. So now, so there's one for the X part and one for the Y part. Now as far as X and Y, the way Vivor explains it on their list, of course, doing CNC programming for years, uh, I've always worked with X, Y, and Z. Uh, we call it X, Y, but on Vivor, they call it horizontal and vertical because they consider this the x-axis and this the y-axis so this is vertical in the three-dimensional programming it's x y and z is up and down so just so that you don't get confused with the stuff that we talk about on here now uh, let's look at some of the controls on here and let you see look at the handles and the scales so that you can see how they are arranged here's their scale it goes from zero all the way to zero again and we'll talk about this in just a second it goes from zero to zero. There are actually 40 marks, okay, on this scale. 40 marks. The same way on this scale. It goes from zero all the way up, 40 marks. 
and then each one of those marks is separated into blocks of 10 okay each one of those is separated into blocks of 10 so I'm going to explain those here in just a second now what I did was I came over here and I set my this block here and I took my veneer caliper now I've used veneer calipers and the dial indicators my whole life uh, ever since I was a kid so I wanted to know how accurate the scale was so when you do it this scale every time it makes a complete circle that is two millimeters of motion in this direction two millimeters the way I did it was I set a, a bar here and I took my scale well can't hardly get it in here sitting at this angle I took my scale measured it rolled it the full two full one turn and came back and the difference was two millimeters okay so a full turn of this scale is two millimeters it is the exact same with this one so now those two millimeters are segmented off into 40 each little thing on here is 1 40th of a millimeter it's kind of an odd way to do this so each mark here is 1 40th of a millimeter yeah that's just kind of an odd way to do it so when this is reading 2.0 when this is reading 2.0 you've you've turned exactly one millimeter except what I am noticing is there's a lot of difference between when you start turning and the table starts moving okay it's obvious why there are no locks on this why this doesn't move so that you could lock it like like on a milling machine you can lock how far you want something like this to go and stop it so when you turn it it stops when it gets there well you can't do that with this which that's okay with me uh, I'm not this is not a, a hardcore milling machine but what happens is is right here is the place where you can feel it start to catch and the table start to move so there's a difference between when the table moves see if I move the table now this way then it goes all the way back to there before the table moves in the other direction okay so really you have to feel for when the table starts moving and then you can figure out how long it's going to take you for it to move one millimeter and that's in both directions okay I did it in both directions now I also used a dial indicator like this and I set it such that the dial was right like that and I ran this table back and forth because I wanted to know oh, my dial came out get down there there baby didn't lock it down uh, I wanted to know if the table varied in and out as it moved but this table does not vary in and out less than a thousandth of an inch so I'm pretty pleased with that now as far as coming back when you come back with the table this one appears that it has the same problem let me show you what I'm talking about with the dial indicator here's what I'm talking about see my dial indicator see I can move that a pretty good distance and the dial indicator doesn't move okay it moves now it moves there but in between going back and forth the dial indicator doesn't move so there's a lot of play between when this engages and when this moves so you'll have to adapt for that 
in uh, doing your stuff, but you will not be able to use this as a stop or to gauge how far to go. You're going to have to actually put a mark on your material or something. So as it travels this way and that way, there's no variance in the dial indicator. So it's not moving in or out or okay, so it's pretty well machined to stay on a good straight path. Now, as far as in and out from this side, I put the dial indicator over there too, and it's the same way. It's good and solid about the travel in and out and stays within a thousandth. Okay, that's pretty doggone good uh, for a table that I spent $89 for. All right, an XY table for $89, and it's within a thousandth of its movement, its longitudinal and its horizontal movement. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty good. Let me move this out of the way. Uh, as far as the heft, this thing's made pretty heavy. I bet it weighs 25 pounds. Uh, I think it says it's 10 point something kilograms. It feels like it weighs 25 pounds. So 10 point something kilograms is exactly right. Now the holes here, uh, this is cast. And of course it's been machined. Uh, there's blue paint on a lot of different surfaces. But the paint is mainly out of the... I look, try, tried to get down in here as far as I could without disassembling it and it's pretty well uh, pretty well the paint is off of these mating surfaces I'm sure if I don't keep these mating surfaces old good it's gonna be a problem but uh, there are grooves they match up with the grooves on on most tables uh, this one matches with with this table real good so that when I'm using this as a milling machine I have the full run. Now this only moves three inches. It moves three inches in that direction and three inches in the Y direction. In the X direction and three inches in the Y direction. So what I have done is I have set this up and I will fasten it to my table here with the corner over here under the bit. So I've got three inches worth of travel in that direction and three inches worth of travel back. All right, I hate doing anything left-handed one of the things that I don't like uh, is right here. This is right on the tabletop. Okay? So, I really wish this base was a little deeper because that's going to make this right down there where you can't get to it hardly. Now, I don't like doing anything left-handed. But, just like bridge ports and, and those stuff, the controls are on this side, but most of the of those uh, high-cost mills, they have controls on both sides. Are you going to be able to set up an electric feed for this? And I was thinking about that. And there is a bolt right here and a screw that fastens to the screw. I think I could put up, put on a low-speed feed here. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. This is three inches worth of milling at a time. So uh, a, a feed is going to be kind of useless. So uh, now I will attach this review to my uh, review to my building. I'll put that in the, in the same playlist as building the uh, mill out of a drill press. Uh, but it'll list it as review of the Vivor. XY table. So, uh, as far as use, I think this will do good. How often will these screws come loose and cause it to have a, a little variance? I don't know. But for the home user who's going to use it on a drill press or uh, make a mill out of a little drill press, this would probably service you really, really well especially if you're only cutting three inch long things, uh, maybe even some six inch long things. Six inches is gonna be about your, about your length, but the truth is, 
right here, if I set this right at this corner of my mill, like that, and bolt it down, then all I've got back here, past it, is about six inches. Okay? All I've got back there is about six inches past this. So, 18 inches is the deepest I can mill something. Alright? Does that make sense? But now, I could put something wide here and, and fast it down and, and mill that way. Now, over time, how's this going to hold up? I don't know. You will have to know that this has a lot of slop in it. These, uh, these controls, they have quite a bit of slop. This one don't have nearly as much slop as that one does. I hear the pop copter going over. Uh, but the, the Y direction has a lot more play than the X direction. Also, the Y direction can be completely unscrewed. Okay, it, it can come completely out. The X direction, it actually stops rather than letting itself be unscrewed out here at the end. Okay. Okay, here are my final thoughts on this uh, Vivor XY uh, mill and drilling table. Uh, I think, I think that based on, based on observations, it's going to be very useful in making small parts, maybe machining uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum, steel. I don't know if it'll, how it'll hold up doing steel. Will it chatter a lot? I, I don't know. There's no way to find out until you do it. So uh, you can follow us. We're doing this on a, uh, on a uh, mill to, or drill to mill conversion video where we're going to take this and a Harbor Freight drill press and convert it to a mill. And some people are going to say, well, you know, that's Mickey Mouse, but hey, have you looked at the price of a mill? Even the little mills, the little portable mills at Harbor Freight are $900. Okay, so we're looking at, we're looking at getting into a mill that's going to mill something three inches by three inches or six inches by six inches for only, only about $400. So this was $89 and if you come along you can see us do the whole conversion. Now will this work really good? I think it's going to work really good. It feels real heavy duty. Uh, for the type of stuff I do it's not going to do production. You know that. This drill press is not going to be a production mill. It never was going to be. But for what we're going to do, we'll be making parts, uh, maybe modifying a part, maybe putting, cutting a key slot in something. Okay, for that, I think this is going to be an awesome addition to our homestead. Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homestead stuff every week, sometimes once, sometimes five videos. just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing. Okay, as I was editing this video, uh, my explanation about the scale on... This was really uh, not too clear. So I decided to come back and do a more extensive explanation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pictures that show the scale a little clearer than I can with a video camera. And it'll help you to understand what is... Uh, this scale, how this scale works. All right. So, if you've got the scale, there is a line that you can set the scale at zero. Uh, every solid number, like one, or two, or three, or four, represents half a mil millimeter or 0.5 okay does that make sense every whole number one represents half a millimeter 0.5 millimeters 
Then, in between each one of those two, there are tents marked off. Okay? There are tents marked off. So, five point whatever it is. Two, three, and then each line is the third place. So, this would be read like it's five or point five, two, okay? Hopefully, that makes it a little more clear. Uh, I have uh, looked at this pretty close, and again, like I said, it's got a lot of play, so moving it between going forward and going backwards, you're going to have to wait till you feel the table begin to move before you mark where it is and start counting. Uh, but each mark is the third decimal point in millimeters. So it's marked off so that this thing moves two millimeters for every full circle of the dial. And then it's marked off so that every tenth of a millimeter, every, uh, excuse me, not tenth, but hundredth of a millimeter, and then every thousandth of a millimeter. Uh, how accurate it is to that thousandth of a millimeter, I didn't test it, but that's that's the way you read it. So I hope that makes it a little clearer.